Uh, hey, my name is Mark Morin and welcome to my studio. Okay, first question. When did you first decide you wanted to go into photography? And from this, what sort of topics, problems, groups, or moods do you seek to capture through your photography? So, I mean, cameras have always been uh, around, you know, for me, even from like a young age. Um, my grandfather was actually a photographer. And, um, you know, while he wasn't a professional one, he's a pretty good amateur photographer. And, um, you know, my first... Um, but my first professional job as a photographer was actually right out of high school. Um, I did uh, real estate photography for a, for a real estate company that I worked for. I remember when they, they handed me the DSLR for the first time, it was just kind of like, holy crap, here's this thing I have no idea how to use. And they were just kind of like, hey, figure it out. Gosh, I'm going to sound old here, but you know, in a world uh, where YouTube tutorials weren't at the tips of our fingers, um, figuring it out kind of just meant a whole bunch of trial and error and practice. But when I, when I left that job, I mostly left the camera behind too. Um, you know, for a little while I worked at a, at a gay bar in upstate New York and, and worked on their social media and took nightlife photos. But outside of that, there really wasn't any sort of like professional photography that I was doing. But as, as iPhone cameras improved, I found myself you know, wanting to take more and more and more photos and edit them in, you know, in creative ways. And at, at one point, you know, I just felt like I was outgrowing what I could achieve on my phone. And that was a few years ago. And I started just investing in gear again. And initially I was focused on making like YouTube and Instagram story content that was kind of about iPhone photography. You know, but things shifted for me when a friend invited me out to one of their drag performances. And, um, you know, I went out that night planning to make an Instagram story and came home with a set of photos that I'm still quite proud of today. Um, and from there, I just jumped headfirst into documenting queer culture and, you know, really planting roots in the community here. Uh, how would you describe your own personal style of photography and videography? Gosh, well, um, <laughs> uh, for me, I think it's all about available light. I'm kind of on an anti-strobe quest but it's, it's about available light, or at least the appearance of available light. I like for my portrait work to capture real moments and my event coverage to really surround the viewer as if they were there. Um, I try to achieve this with a, you know, a balance of wide angle lenses to really immerse the viewer in, uh, in that moment and, um, and use of depth of field to really sort of frame um, what I'm looking for you to see. How do you select your subjects and what is your thought process behind you? Position them, colors you choose, etc. Um, I mean, most of the work that I'm doing is event coverage. So I'm usually more focused on composition than positioning. Um, and uh, I, I kind of go into it with uh, the intent to operate more of as a photojournalist than a creative director. Um, you need to tell the story of the event and um, you know, not only the main subject matter that you're you know, contracted to, to, to cover, um, but really capturing the vibe of the room in crowd reactions and the little details. Um, again, those real moments that are kind of in between. Uh, what sort of challenges or obstacles have you had to face in portraying members of this community? Uh, photo credit. Next question. Uh, when you hear the word beauty in terms of what's being captured on a lens, what comes to mind and how do you try to embody that with an image? You know, to me, beauty comes in many, many forms. Um, but I find, I find that I'm most attracted to uh, moments of vulnerability or, you know, just leaving it all out there. Uh, my favorite shoots are the ones where, you know, I'm documenting someone's morning routine. Um, you know, real simple, just what does it look like to make eggs in your kitchen? What does it look like when you're sipping your coffee in your underwear and the sun's coming through onto your couch? Um, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're a drag performer and you come home and it's the end of the night and you're washing all that makeup off of your face, um, that's the real stuff that I think not everybody sees all the time. Um, you know, we all go to the shows and we, we see the videos from the shows and we see people's photos from shows. Um, but a lot of the, the getting ready and the, the things that... Um, that everyone has to do, uh, you just don't always get to see it. Those are those moments of vulnerability and, and what I find most compelling in some of the images that I make. How does this tie into increasing visibility into the LGBT community in the United States? 
I think the more content that we create and distribute only makes it harder for us to be erased. Um, and uh, I think the more that we can, uh, as a community, show that you know we are we are very much like all the other humans that are out there. We just do different things with our time. Uh, some people go to soccer practice. Some people go to drag shows. I think that I think that um, as far as visibility goes and um, inclusion, I think that we're on the right track. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't plenty of politicians that stand in our way on a daily basis, but I think when I think about my experience, um, you know, 15 years ago coming out in high school and what it meant to be gay or queer or lesbian or bi or trans, um, or, you know, gender non-binary wasn't even a thing that we talked about. Um, I think that, uh, I think that things are a hell of a lot better now um, for, for, for kids coming up and, and really discovering who they are. So if we can, you know, so the more content that we create and the more content that we make, um, we are only, you know, we're putting it out there for people to discover, people who are, aren't sure who they are or aren't sure of themselves. Um, uh, I, you know, the answer for me is always more content. Uh, what sort of impact do you hope to make with your photography? I mean, I, I hope my work brings more visibility to queer culture, um, especially drag and the trans community. Um, you know, again, the more we make, the more we put out, the, the, the more, you know, the, the, it's, there's a normalization in, in some aspects of, of, of what it means to be, what it means to be queer. Um, what would you say has been the most rewarding aspects of doing your work? Um, <laughs> I think the, the quick ego driven answer here is that more people follow me on Instagram. And, you know, while that's been a, a source of encouragement, I think it's very easy to get into this, the negativity that social media can bring into your life. You know, with my work often being shared on, on social media, um, I've had opportunities to work on bigger projects and um, expanding my experience as an artist, um, but also, you know, forging business relationships. So I, I think that um, the, you know, finding ways to um, have your art support you in a financial sense is, um, you know, I think the key to, to sustaining what you want to do in a long-term way, and that's definitely one thing that I'm focused on. Um, and it's been rewarding to, uh, to find myself in those opportunities. Um, you know, on a, on a more personal level, uh, um, you know, social anxiety makes it really difficult for me to engage with new people um, face to face, uh, especially out in bars and clubs. And, um, you know, the camera is often an, an icebreaker to, to conversation. Um, and uh, I definitely find myself speaking to more folks that I don't think I probably would have, you know, approached in a bar or, or, or even who would have approached me because, you know, I'm, I'm the person standing there with a camera. And, you know, when I'm kind of freaking out and I need something to just hide behind, um, the, the, the camera is a, it's not a cheap crutch. Um, but if the alternative is uh, pharmaceuticals and alcohol, then I think the camera is probably the better choice to, uh, to use as a crutch to anxiety. Uh, goals. So, yeah, I think this year I'm, I'm really just focused on building um, my, my business and, and making sure that I'm set up for, you know, scalable success. Yeah, so, so I want to shoot more drag. I want to make more portraits. Um, I, uh, I want to sell prints on my site. People ask me about it all the time, and I, I just haven't sat down and uh, clicked the buttons to make that a reality. As far as my YouTube is concerned, um, I'm, I really want to bring more value to the community of people who are, are watching my content on YouTube and discovering my content on YouTube. So through training and tutorial content, that's kind of what I'm looking to put more of out this year um, and into the future. And um, the, the queer community being a, a large part in that. Um, yeah, you know, the thing about the, uh, the, thing about the, the, the camera uh, gear and educational uh, space within YouTube um, is it's mostly dominated by straight men. Um, and it's, it's often very bro -y, very fratty, very um, not my vibe. Um, and there are queer creators out there looking for the same kind of educational information. There are female creators out there looking for the same kind of information. Um, and if you can, you know, just the, diversica the diversification of voices that that 
type of information is coming from, I think only serves the marketplace. So um, making sure that I am positioning myself to, um, to fill some of those shoes or at least be a voice in that conversation, um, that's something that's important to me, especially this year. And um, taking uh, and, and, and using the work that I make in the queer community to then uh, educate others on, you know, principles of photography or tips and tricks or, you know, just like gear recommendations, um, but using, you know, drag shows as test footage or drag performer portraits um, as, uh, as test images or example images. I think those are subtle ways that I can consistently infuse queer culture um, into the eyes of people who may not have been searching for it. Um, and that is, um, you know, I think that's one way that I, at least I can do my part in um, and making sure that um, in, in making sure that the that that we're as visible as we possibly can be. All right. Last question. Do I have any other comments? Um, I'm sorry that it took me so long to make you this video. Um, last one's just for me. What camera do you use and what piece of camera equipment that you never leave the house without? I'll show you. So this is the piece of camera equipment that I never leave the house without. And it's actually, uh, it's actually supposed to be like a key lanyard for a camera bag that I have. Um, but it's like a perfect little bracelet and it clips onto these Peak Design uh, quick release straps that mount to the bottom of my camera. So it, it doesn't matter what shoot I'm going to, I have a few of these uh, little lanyards. There's one in my car, there's probably one in every single camera bag that I have because when I don't have this on my wrist, um, I am like, just afraid of dropping my camera the whole time. And um, I don't really wanna have to replace uh, this camera. This is the uh, Canon EOS R, the uh, original version. There's a new one coming out soon. Um, and this is Canon's first ever full frame mirrorless camera. Um, when it first came out, I just jumped right on it. I, you know, smaller form factor, uh, faster shutter speed, things like that. But um, the amount of dynamic range that I can pull out of this camera compared to others is uh, pretty incredible. Um, I mean, I'm talking about taking black shadows in unedited images and, and completely lighting them up. Um, so I, I, uh, this, is, this, is, this is my favorite camera that I've ever owned. Um, and, uh, and I've got two of them. We're, I'm shooting on another one right now. Um, the other piece of gear that, um, that I'm low-key obsessed with is the Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4 lens, uh, which is what I'm shooting this video on. Um, it's a big lens. Uh, it's really heavy, but it is the widest aperture lens uh, at this focal length that, that you can get. And when you're shooting in the dark, you need to allow as much light into that sensor as you possibly can. And this is the lens that um, consistently does it for me every single time and, uh, and makes some pretty sharp images, uh, especially for like a third party lens, which aren't supposed to be as good. Um, okay. I'm sorry again that it took so long to make this video for you, but thank you for reaching out. This is like, it makes me feel good. It's, it's inspiring. We can add that to question six or whatever it was. Anyway, okay, here's, here's the video.